Morning, Year 7. Welcome back to McGrathematics for your next video math lesson. We're going to start off with some flashback questions from our previous video. Give this video a pause and see if you can figure out any of these four warm-up questions. And if you're feeling really confident, you can try the challenge question over here on the right. See how you go. Okay, for question A, we're trying to figure out what number makes these two fractions equivalent. So the way we did this the other day is we said 4 turning into 12 is being multiplied by 3. So we'll also multiply the top by 3 and we'll get an answer of 9. So 9 out of 12 is the same fraction as 3 out of 4. For question B, we're simplifying 4 out of 16. So we're trying to think of a number that is a factor of both 4 and 16. So a number that multiplies into both those numbers. Uh, 2 is a good answer. A better answer would be 4. So on the top we've got 1 lot of 4 and on the bottom we have 4 lots of 4. So we can write this as 1 over 4. Okay, 1 4 on the top and four fours on the bottom. Okay, question C, pretty similar to question A. We're saying six turning into 30 is being multiplied by five. So we'll multiply the bottom by five and five sevens is 35. Okay, question D, the best common factor of 15 and 25 would be five. There's three of them up top and there's five down below. So we get three out of five. Okay, for the challenge question, if you had a go, um, the best way to compare two fractions is to make their base numbers, the denominators, the same thing. So I'm going to take the 5 out of 9, and I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 11, which gets me 55 out of 99. Now if I take the second fraction, and I multiply top and bottom by 9, I'm going to get 9 sixes are 54, and 9 elevens are 99. Now the two numbers on the bottom are the same. We can see that the left one is 55 out of 99, which is slightly bigger than 40 uh, than 54 out of 99. So 5 ninths is slightly bigger than 6 elevenths. Okay, today's lesson is all about adding and subtracting fractions. So a really important lesson. Let's dive into our first question. Okay, we're starting off with a true or false question. The question for you is, true or false, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 equals two out of five. Have a think about whether that makes sense to you or not. So a lot of year seven students who are new to fractions will say, yeah, that makes sense because one plus one is two and two plus three is five, so it all makes sense. Let's have a look at a picture and see if it actually does make sense. Right here we have one half and right here we have one third. So if we added these two green pieces together, would we get two out of five? Well, no, we get more than that because a half is already bigger than two fifths. So there's no way that one half plus one third can be equal to two fifths. So this statement must be false. Okay, so adding fractions isn't as simple as add the tops and add the bottoms. Let's try another question. This one instead is three out of six plus two out of six equals five out of six. Okay, this is a kind of similar question. So three out of six is one half from before and two out of six is one third from before. So does this make more sense? Three plus two is five, and the sixes stay the same. Well, hopefully, because that is true. All right, let's have a look at a picture to prove it. So here we have three out of six. So one, two, three out of six of this circle. This circle, we have two out of six. If we put these two green pieces together, we would get this picture on the right here, which is five out of six. Okay, so the statement is true. What I'm trying to get across here is that if you're adding fractions, if the bottom number is the same, it's nice and easy because you keep it the same and you just add the numbers on top. Okay, so when the denominator matches, you're all good. You just got to add the tops and it's the same for subtraction as well. All right, so it's a little bit trickier when the numbers on the bottom don't match like before with one over two and one over three. So our process is to say, well, when the denominators don't match, it's a little bit hard. So we do a bit of math to change the fractions so that the bottoms match, okay? We write one half as three out of six and we write one third as two out of six, okay? So it's the same picture. We're just sort of talking about it differently with equivalent fractions. Now the numbers on the bottom are the same. We can add the tops and we get our correct answer of five out of six, okay? So the main takeaway from this video to start off with is that if you're adding and the denominators are the same, it's straightforward. When they're different, it's going to be a bit more tricky and we'll do some more examples later on. Okay, so please get down in your notes that when two fractions have the same denominator on the bottom, we can add or subtract the numerators, which is up top, and keep the denominator the same. Okay, let's do another example. So 3 out of 10 plusing with 4 out of 10 
Once again, the base is matched, so we're all good. We're gonna keep it as a bottom out of 10. The numerators are gonna to sum together, three plus four is seven. Okay, and there's your answer, easy peasy. For another example, for a takeaway, we've got 25 out of 30, take away 10 out of 30. Once again, when the denominators are matching, that's sweet, and we wanna keep them as a 30. We're just gonna subtract the tops. So 25 take away 10 is 15. So we'll write 15 out of 30. As always with any fraction question, if you have an answer that you can simplify, it's probably a good idea to do that. So 15 out of 30 is correct, but it'd be better if we would write our answer as a simplified fraction and write this as one out of two, okay? Because the top is 115 and the bottom is two 15s. So that's a good answer, but one half is gonna be a great answer that's gonna get you full marks in a math test, okay? All right, using those examples, I want you to pause the video and try these ones by yourself. All the denominators are all matching, so they're very similar to the two we just tried. Hit pause and have a go yourself. Okay, for the first one, our base is gonna stay as 11 and our numerator is going to be six plus four is 10. So 10 out of 11 is your correct answer. For B, 17 take away 12 is gonna be five. So we have five out of 33. For C, we're gonna be over eight and seven plus four is equal to 11. So here we have an improper fraction because the number on top is bigger than the denominator. Um, you can leave your answer like that. That's a perfectly correct answer. There's nothing wrong with an improper fraction. If you want to, you can write your answer as a mixed numeral if you prefer. So eight fills up 11 once with three left over. So we got one and three over eight. For question D, we're gonna keep our base as 15 and write our numerator as eight minus three is five. Five out of 15, we can uh, improve our answer by simplifying and saying that's gonna be one out of three or a third. For question E, we'll keep the base as 28 and we'll write the top as 18 plus 10 is 28 as well. Now, what's a better way of writing 28 out of 28? Well, you can write that as one whole if you prefer. And for question F, we have 19 take away five is gonna give us 14 and the base is gonna be 10 because that stays the same. 14 out of 10, we can write that as seven out of five by cutting the top and bottom in half. If you want to, you can write one and two fifths or you're more than welcome to just leave it as seven out of five as a correct answer. Okay, cool. So there's the examples on how we add and subtract when the base is the same. Now we'll do some examples where the, de where the denominators are not equal and it's a bit more challenging. So we'll see how we go. Okay, I'm gonna show you two ways of um, answering questions like this um, and you can decide which method you prefer or you can try a bit of both like I'm gonna do. All right, so our first question is one quarter plus one third, okay? So first method is all about changing the fractions to make the bases match, which is pretty challenging at first and it does take a bit of practice. So first thing we're gonna to say to ourselves is what's the number that four and three both multiply into? Uh, good answer is gonna be 12, because that's four times three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite these fractions as instead of being out of four and out of three, I'm going to write them out of 12, okay? So for the one quarter, to make the four into a 12, we've multiplied it by three. So we'll also multiply the top by three and we'll get three, okay? Three times four is 12, three times one is three. In the second fraction, we've multiplied the denominator by four to turn it into 12. So we'll also multiply the numerator by four and we'll get four. Okay, so this question and this question are the exact same thing. We're using equivalent fractions, but now that the bases are matching up, it's super easy and we're gonna keep them as 12 and we're gonna make the top three plus four is seven. Okay, so the tricky part is rewriting your fractions with the same denominator and then you add the numerators and you've got your final answer. Okay, a lot of students find that tricky, so I'm gonna give you an alternative option if you're um, struggling with your equivalent fractions, you might need a bit more practice. Method two, I like to call the fraction fish. Okay, it's kind of a shortcut. What we're gonna do is on our picture, we are going to draw this shape, which I think kind of looks like a face down fish, like there's his tail and there's its head, okay? So this blue shape is called the fraction fish. Now the fraction fish are some lines that uh, remind you what you need to multiply, okay? So first things first is the, is the fish face, that's doing four times three. That gives you your number on the bottom, okay? This line here, four times three is 12. Now the next line is joining the three and the one. So we do three times one is three. Okay, so we did four times three on the bottom. We did three times one for the top left. 
The question was a plus, so I'm going to write a plus right here. And now our last line in our fish is the 4 times the 1. That gets us an answer of 4. Okay, so the fraction fish is kind of doing this step for us, um, just trying to take some guesswork out of it, okay? Now we tidy up our answer, 3 plus 4 is 7, so we get the same thing, we get 7 out of 12. Okay, so if you're confident with your fractions, you might find method 1 really easy. Um, if, you're, if you're struggling a bit, then um, I recommend using the fish to help you out, okay? Let's try a couple more examples. This one we have a subtraction, we're doing 1 half take away 2 fifths. If you feel like you're already getting it, you're welcome to pause and have a go, but I'm going to dive straight into my solution. Okay, so first things first, with method one, we're going to make the two fractions have the same denominator. So we're thinking of a number that two and five both multiply into. Um, a good option is going to be 10. So I'm going to rewrite both of these fractions, still with a minus, but I'm going to make the denominators now 10. Okay, for the first fraction, we've times the bottom by five to make this a 10. So we'll times the top by 5, and it turns it into a 5. Okay, so top and bottom being multiplied by 5. In the second fraction, top and bottom are going to be multiplied by 2. Turns the 5 into a 10, turns the 2 into a 4. Okay, so there we have our equivalent fractions. Now we have the same denominator. We can subtract the tops. 5 minus 1, sorry, 5 minus 4 is 1. So we get 1 out of 10. Easy peasy. Okay, option two is our fraction fish. So we draw our fish shape over our picture and the lines are reminding us what we need to multiply. So first things first, we do face first. Two times five is 10. Now we do this line here. We go five times one is five. We put a minus because the question was a minus. Two times two is equal to four. And now we tidy up our answer. Five minus four is one out of 10. Either way, we get the same answer. It's whatever you prefer. Okay, one more example to make sure you know what you're doing. We are going to do 5 out of 6 plus 3 out of 4. Okay, using method 1 with the equivalent fractions, we're trying to think of a number that 6 and 4 both multiply in 2. So 6 times 4 is 24, which is a good answer, but there is a better answer. You always want to try and find the smallest number that the two numbers are going into. It's going to save you some time. So even though 6 times 4 is 24, I'm going to change both fractions to be out of 12. Okay, so 12 is the smallest common factor, sorry, it's the least common multiple of 6 and 4. So 12 is 6 times 2, and 12 is 4 times 3. Okay, so for this fraction, we've multiplied the bottom by 2 to turn it into a 12. So we'll multiply the top by 2 and make it a 10. For the second fraction, we've multiplied the bottom by 3 to turn it into a 12. So we'll multiply the top by 3 and it becomes a 9. Now the bases match, we're going to write our answer over 12, and 10 plus 9 is equal to 19. So 19 out of 12 is where we're going to leave it. There's nothing wrong with an improper fraction. Okay, let's try the fraction fish and see if we get the same answer. So we draw our fish shape. We've got our three lines. First one is 6 times 4, so we're going to be doing 24 on the bottom. Now 5 times 4 for this line is going to get us 20, so 20 goes top left. Question was a plus and six times three is 18. Okay, now 20 plus 18 is 38, so we end up with 38 out of 24, which is not what we got over here. We got 19 out of 12. Okay, this is because when you do the fraction fish, sometimes you have to simplify your answer. 38 and 24, we can cut both of those in half. Half of 38 is 19, and half of 24 is 12. Okay, so if you're using the fraction fish, sometimes you'll have to simplify your final answer if you wanna get the best possible answer. Okay, cool. Hopefully some of that made sense and now you're potentially ready to try some by yourself. Here are four examples. If you feel like you're getting it, please pause and have a go or if you need to see me do a few more, um, that's all good. That's what I'm here for. Okay, there was your chance to pause. I'm going to do the first two using the um, equivalent fraction method and I'm going to do C and D using fraction fish just to add a bit of variety. Okay, first one, five and four. A number that they both go into is 20. So we're going to write them out of 20. First one, multiplying top and bottom by 4. We get 4 on top and 20 on the bottom. Second fraction, multiplying by 5. We get 5 out of 20. Now we have 20 as our base and 4 plus 5 is 9. So we have 9 out of 20. Question B, once again, we're going to write as a common base. So a number that 2 and 3 are both going into is 6. So I'm going to write both fractions out of 6. 
The first one, multiplying top and bottom by three, so we get three out of six is one half, and one third is two out of six. Now we write our answer out of six, and three minus two is one, so we have one out of six. Okay, now getting the fish involved for the last two. So we have our fraction fish, so we're gonna do six times five is 30 on the bottom. Five times four is 20 for the top left. We had a plus, and six times two is 12. Up top, we get 32 out of 30, um, which can be simplified to 16 out of 15 if you prefer, which you should. So once again, sometimes using fraction fish, you will have to simplify. And question D, fraction fish again. Here is our fish shape. So first is the face. So nine times 10 for the bottom gets us 90. Then we do 10 times five for 50. We had a minus and we do nine times two is 18. Okay, now for 50 minus 18, we'll get 32. 32 out of 90, we can simplify this. Uh, we can cut them both in half. So half of 32 is 16 and half of 90 is 45. And can we do anything more with that? I don't think so. That's probably where we'll leave it. Let me double check for you. Yeah, that's fully simplified. Okay, cool. Those examples, hopefully you got four out of four and you're ready to try some more in the practice work that I posted. We're gonna finish off today's uh, video with just a quick challenge question. So we've got if Kyla ate one third of a cake and then Isaac ate one fifth of a cake, how much of the cake is remaining? Okay, now I'm not gonna go through this challenge question on the screen because I want you guys, if you're feeling confident, to have a go yourself. And if you think you have an answer, you can post it down in the comments below or you can flip me an email. First correct answer will get a prize, so good luck. All right, have a go at the practice questions post on Google Classroom and please give me a shout if I can help you any further. Um, thank you for watching, I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time.